pay. Um, we, we recently applied for uh, Medicaid and um, we got tentative approval. So that will open up services to those who can't afford it. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to um, going into, into that. Um, and any, uh, any plans for expanding services uh, through uh, the Regency at Huololai um, on the island? On the island, over in Hilo, um, Regency Pacific is um, our corporate office is um, building, or they haven't started yet, but they're, they're in the process of breaking ground, um, an assisted living and an independent um, living facility. Um, it will also have um, a skilled um, SNF and ICF uh, building, so it will it'll be a continuum of care, um, which will be a nice plus because we certainly need the beds. Mm -hmm. And with the long-term care of veterans home in Hilo, I mean, those were additional beds that were provided, but obviously the, the demand is much greater. Um, do any of you know the, uh, the services that are being provided by, I think it's the Office of Aging, through the county uh, at that Sun Sun, what used to be the old Sun Sun Lao restaurant facility? Um, are yeah, you aware it's, it's of that? The you can, uh, it's the closest you can come to, uh, you know, a one-stop shop as far as uh, outpatient services for the elderly, for frail, and uh, you know, really vulnerable. Uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, as a private care doctor, you have to be everything to everybody. <laughs> so I'm not very successful with social work, I'm sorry. So I, I, I don't know if I'd be able to tell you exactly what they got. <laughs> uh -huh. I know that all my patients that go there you know, are usually very happy with uh, the referrals they get and mm -hmm. kind of chore services maybe, or you know, maybe a helping hand, you know, somebody to come in that's paid a little bit to go go out and get uh, groceries and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I can comment, and I, so, I should know this, but I don't know exactly the... Uh, but but in terms of, uh, you know, being an information sort resource, right. that's, they can fulfill a lot of those needs. Right, they, mm -hmm. do, uh, they do very well. Uh, well. We use them as such. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe are you talking about the ADRC? Yeah. 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 Are, are you familiar with that facility, Stuart? Uh, do you have one on the Big Island, mm -hmm. but it's, is it off the ground? I, I thought that there... They had some. Yeah. They, it and is Pam, off the ground. Pam is it, nodding, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is off the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have one in the city and county, uh, a virtual one. Uh, I think that's, right. yeah, mm -hmm. city and county of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But it's more information sharing, you know, so people can go it's in. It's a gateway. And, right. It's, it's a tr triage kind of a operation. Mm -hmm. But getting back to Craig's point, uh, once you get through the triage, you know, then you run into the, the traffic. <laughs> right. And the traffic uh -huh. is the congestion. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a traffic jam. And I, I think the last session we talked about um, uh, AARP had 11 providers of, um, of, of, um, of uh, home care, uh, nonprofits, not for profit, but nonprofits. <coughs> and of the 11, eight, uh, basically said that they had to wait list uh, clients. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of congestion there. Is that the community-based kind of services? The community-based, I mean, you've got, you've got uh, the nursing homes who aren't, you right. know, they're, they're full up. Mm -hmm. You've got the care homes and foster homes that have got pressure of their own. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these home-based services. Um, and they're, some of them are waitlisted. Mm -hmm. You almost need, uh, you know, I, w I was talking about social services, but you, also, you almost need a case manager or somebody to maneuver the elderly, you know, through the, these outpatient things, because nobody, nobody can keep track of them. I mean, I'm in the field and it's hard to keep track mm -hmm. of who's open, you know, how do you call, how do you get on the list, you know, who do you call, what, what's, what's open to you, where are they, you know, it, it's not, you know, not easy at all. We oh. try, and Hilo Medical Center does it, tries, you know, because they have some backup with social services and so forth. but. You know, for somebody practicing in the outside in the field, whoop, it's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yep. like I said, you, we try to be all things to everybody, mm -hmm. but you know, social service is not easy for mm -hmm. you know a primary care you know practice to do. You know, it's uh, it almost seems like uh, you know there is room for that kind of service for people that uh, you know that are on the outpatient basis and, and need help. You know, mm -hmm. a call a call to this number where they can maneuver you through these things. Uh, 
I don't know, I, I know I'd be the first one to, to, to refer my patients there if there was such a service. Though, mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. So we're talking about that kind of information service. Information. The need for beds, whether it, whatever, whether it's private sector, public sector, the community based. We have, we actually have an easier time trying to determine hotel occupancy <laughs> than we do <laughs> mm. trying to determine yeah. mm. Uh, the, That's a good the, point. the availability of long-term care right. services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's very, very, and, and you, uh, Lisa, you mentioned the, the workforce that, uh, that provide the care and the services. And, you know, you had mentioned, um, uh, is it CNA? Certified nurses assistant. Mm -hmm. the, the need, there's just not enough mm -hmm. of qualified individuals that have been trained um, and then they have to be recertified, and you know it's it's we we just need programs that are available that are affordable to them to be able to keep up with the demand. And can that be done through like a community college through like an associate degree program? Or? Um, it it doesn't even need to be through a community college. There there are. Um, uh, facilities that can do, you know, they they're approved by the state. They have their state-approved programs, and their program is eight to twelve weeks long. And then they, if they pass the test at the end of the the, the practical and the clinical training, then they become certified. I see. But that's what's relatively expensive in your mind, and so right. It, so that there's a, a whole back there, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I know that one of our uh, future discussions is going to be on uh, the workforce development programs for our healthcare industry, um, because I, you know, I think that's in all aspects, not just long-term care. Uh, you know, those are deficits that we need to uh, figure out ways to fill. So. Bobby? Well, Russell, time passes quickly, uh -huh. <laughs> and you know we want to really thank you all for taking the time to be with us to talk about our long-term care crises. Mm -hmm. And I think we've really just kind of scratched the surface, surface. so it's something yes. that we need to revisit and uh, you know be able to provide some comfort to our residents on the beginning. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great.